morning everyone. Uh, my name is Lee Falk. I'm a regional live, extension livestock agent with the LSU Ag Center. We're here at the Hill Farm Research Station right near Homer today. We're going to be talking briefly about shoes and replacement heifers. Now here at the Hill Farm, while we are a research herd, our herd is not purebred. We do run a commercial herd. It's primarily Angus and Charlotte Cross cows. That makes up the base of our genetics and we're crossing these cattle with Brangus bulls. And so we're here today choosing replacement heifers. Now when you're choosing replacement heifers, we're gonna talk about a number of different factors that come into play when choosing some commercial based uh, replacement heifers. But for us here at the Hill Farm, we're wanting a productive heifer. She's got to be structurally correct. She's got to have a good disposition. She's got to be able to uh, adequately use the forage we have available and she's got to be very productive. Hi, good morning. I'm Ashley Edwards. I am an assistant extension agent and coordinator for animal science programs in the central, northeast, and northwest regions. Uh, we're here today at the Hill Farm talking about selecting replacement heifers. And what I want to talk to you about today is temperament or docility. Now this is something that your opinion kind of plays into it. It can be a little bit more, I guess you could say subjective. Um, you can go in and actually apply a number or a score to docility. So it's something that you need to think about in terms of the fact that temperament is heritable. So if you have one of those cows that wants to jump into the back of the truck or kind of run you over when you're going out to tag its calf or checking on it, you need to think about it when you look at that heifer calf that she has and if you want to go ahead and keep it or not because chances are she might have the exact same temperament that her mom has. What we have in the pen right now are three pretty docile heifers. So these are some that we are looking at keeping here at the hill farm. You can see that they are moving around just a little bit. One thing to watch out for when you do want your docile ones is that they can be too docile. So uh, maybe your kid's show heifer that doesn't necessarily want to move past you in the alley. She doesn't want to walk around with the rest of the herd. Um, think of that kind of temperament where she's pretty calm. So you can see here as I walk up to these, They'll move past me a little bit, but they're not necessarily trying to run me over. So these are what I would probably, if I was going to put a number on it, I'd put these at probably a number one in terms of docile. So a score of one to five, one being I can move them around just a little bit. They don't really throw their head up when they walk or move. Um, they will get out of my way, but they're not trying to eat me, which quite literally is what we would have on a score of five. Um, a pin score of five is going to be those temperamental heifers that have you up on the fence. In two seconds, um, they don't want to, uh, they want to come at you. They don't want to move past you. They want to come right at you and run you over. So that's what we're looking at with the extremes. So in just a second, we're going to show you some of these more flighty temperamental heifers um, up in the alley and then we're gonna bring them in here with our docile heifers. When it comes to actually placing a score on temperament, uh, there are several different selection tools that you can utilize. And um, what I've cited here on this particular slide is our pin scores, which is what we're talking about when we're actually out with the heifers uh, in the pins. These range from one to five, with one being non-aggressive or docile, and five being very aggressive, running you into the fence or up onto the fence, um, and the heifer actually running into the fence. And um, with our, our calmer heifers that we're seeing in this video, I placed a pen score of one on them prior to filming. They were very calm. They were walking very slowly. We could walk up to them. Um, they really didn't get excited. When we started to film, uh, they kind of paced a little bit more, but they were still pretty calm. The others that we're going to see in just a moment when we were sorting through them and getting ready to film, they were definitely in a pin score of four. Um, they were running into the fence. They were uh, very high headed. They definitely kept or we kept some distance and they were still kind of going um, into the fences, into the gates. And you'll see in just a moment, they didn't quite cooperate when we actually began to film. They calmed down just a little bit, um, which I guess technically makes them a little more cooperative, uh, but they did not show the point that I wanted to, which was the, uh, the pin score four. Um, so when we actually filmed, they probably dropped down um, into the three range. Um, so somewhere in there. But again, the point that we're trying to make is that you do need to take behavior, take temperament into, into consideration when you are selecting your replacement females. Uh, another option for that is to look at what the Beef Improvement Federation calls um, a shoot score or a docility score. 
which is what we can see here in this chart. Uh, again, we're still ranging from docile to very aggressive. Uh, in this case, we're looking at a score of one to six, and um, it assesses more of the behavior in the actual shoot versus when you're working with a handful of calves into a pin. So again, um, it's kind of up to you what you want to utilize. Uh, you know, if you want to specifically put numbers onto these for your records and take that into consideration when you're selecting your females, or if you just want to say she's calm or she's crazy and use those two, uh, you know, it, it's up to you. Um, we personally like putting a little bit more of an objective measurement to it and using some of these definitions. So we're going to go ahead here in just a second and see kind of more of our temperamental heifers as we begin to work with those and bring them in with our docile ones that we saw previously. So what we're seeing here now as the guys are trying to work these calves down the alley is they're fairly temperamental. I'll step out of the way. They're a little temperamental, but they're not just put you on the fence kind of crazy right now. Um, and so that's something that if you're getting into actually wanting to quantify and put a number to this, that would probably be the difference in our three, four, and five kind of range. Um, you know, she looks at me, but she does turn. She doesn't actually come um, and literally plow me over, thankfully, since we're videoing this. But um, these are going to be some that are going to be a little bit more temperamental. You have to think about that in terms of um, not only handling them and your safety, but you also have to think about it in terms of gains as well, because what we've seen is that your flightier cattle, your more temperamental cattle actually gain less. Um, they typically stay a little bit uh, lower on the conditions uh, compared to the rest of the herd. And so that's just something that you have to think about. What we're gonna do now is we are gonna move both of these heifers in with our three uh, more docile ones that we had earlier. And we'll just kind of show you how if you add some of the more temperamental ones in, that they will um, kind of stir up even your compounds. Okay, so as we kind of start to wrap up and conclude, we brought our ones that were a little bit flightier in here with our more docile ones. I'm gonna walk back and kind of walk around them in just a little bit, and hopefully they're gonna make the point that I wanna make, which is when you add in some that are a little flightier with your calmer ones, you end up kind of having a little bit of more chaos all over, and even your more docile ones can become a little agitated. Um, now, I know some people out there are probably thinking, well, these aren't that bad, these aren't that crazy or that temperamental, and I'll agree with you there. Um, I've been put on the fence plenty of times and uh, have done a little bit of research with some truly, truly temperamental kind of crazy cows. But again, to the point we're trying to make is this is something you have to think of not only for your safety, for the safety of the other cattle, but it does actually play a role in how these cattle perform over time. Um, so not only just the cow themselves, but if the cow is kind of flighty and the calf's trying to go with it, you're going to run a little bit of gain off that calf too. Um, some research has shown that they don't actually stand still and eat because they're so agitated, they're so nervous, they pick their head up a lot, they walk around a lot, and so at the end, we end up seeing lower production overall from our more temperamental cattle. So just kind of think about that. Um, again, if it's something that you want to actually quantify and put scores into, if you want to get into that for your selection records, reach out to me um, or any one of our livestock specialists here at the Ag Center and we'll be able to help you with that. So let's walk back and kind of see how these cattle are gonna act and see if we're a little bit more agitated once we've thrown in some of these flattier calves or heifers. They're not being too bad. Some of the flattier ones, they'll keep their head up a little bit more. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you have probably seen that look that they get, they hold their high headed is the term we use. Um, honestly, right now they're not cooperating quite the way that I would like for them to, but you can see we do have a little bit more agitation, I think, uh, as a whole with this group. 